Hey, this is OXDF, and today we're doing the advent of code 2023, day 12, hot springs. Um, lots of story as usual, but basically we're gonna get a map that looks something like this. Um, I'm gonna start with this one here to explain it. Basically, you're gonna get um, pound signs and dots, and actually you're get question marks as well, but we'll come back to that. Um, and then you're gonna get a list, a space, and then a list of numbers comma separated, and those are going to be the number of contiguous runs of so in this case, you have a one, and each one has to be broken up. So we couldn't have pound, pound here in a V1, one. That would have to be two. So one, one, three. Here we have one, one, three. Here we have one, three, one, six, et cetera. The tricky part is there's unknowns, which are the question marks. And so here we have one, one, three, and we know this has to be pounds dot pound here. Um, so there's one possible way to do it. But in the second row, uh, this one could be a pound, and this one could be a pound, and that would be one, one, three. This one's always gonna be a pound. But also we could have the first one here and the second one here, or the second one here and the first one here, or the second one here and the second one here. So there's actually four different ways to, to satisfy this map using this input. Um, and so what we need to do is loop over each line and they'll give us, you know, so you can see here um, the number of arrangements. And then we so sum that up so uh, that this is 21 and that is our result. Let's go ahead and grab this puzzle or this example input here. Uh, let's see, we will come back here. Uh, all right, we will use my Gen Day script here for day 12. Um, there is a link in the description to my repo which has this script, but it basically pulls the input for me and makes me a stub. Um, would love one day to be able to pull the example input as well, but um, that would be hard because I'd be grepping blocks on the page and I don't know what, like, would I want the one without the question marks, the one with the question marks, it's just too, too varied. So um, we do it manually. Uh, let's check out our input. We have a thousand rows, a thousand rows. Um, lots of question marks, um, but nothing super long. So I think we'll be okay. Um, what we're gonna do, I think is gonna do a brute force. So um, let's come up here. If we do something like uh, def get combinations, uh, taking in springs and a number, nums, and we'll just, we're now gonna return zero, but I wanna, um, we'll come back to that one. We're gonna do that one later. Uh, so now we can say part one is equal to zero for line and lines, uh, springs comma nums equals line dot split. That'll split us on the, let's explicitly split on the space. Um, and then we wanna do nums, we wanna turn into a list of nums. So we'll say uh, int n, for n in nums, like that. And so that should give us a list, that'll be fine. Um, and then we don't have to worry about the new line here because the int will chop that off just fine. So now we can say uh, part one plus equals get combinations of springs comma nums, like that. And so now that, that should, <laughs> we can run this. Uh, we should get zero, Python day 12, uh, doesn't matter, input.txt. Um, oh, let's see, we're failing here. Okay, oh, uh, we better split nums on comma. This is why we run it, okay, perfect. So we get, we're getting zeros because we're returning zeros. Um, all right, let's think about how we're gonna actually do this now. Um, and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna recursively, we're gonna use a recursive function here and we're gonna recursively um, basically base, check the first character and either um, if it's a dot, we can just move on or if it's a, pound sign, we will make sure that the starting string matches up with the starting number. And if so, we'll we'll chop that part off and move on as well. Um, it'll make more sense if we put it in code. Um, I'm gonna ignore base cases for, to start. So we'll say if strings sub zero, so the first character in, and we're gonna, if it's a question mark or a dot, say dot question mark, um, so we're gonna then, then we can treat this we'll see, as, uh, as a dot. So we'll say, um, total plus equals, and we just need to do get combinations of springs sub one. So we get the, basically chop the first character off because we don't, we can ignore that dot and we'll pass in nums. And so that's easy. Um, if springs sub zero in pound sign question mark. So now, now it's a little bit more complicated because we don't want to do there's gonna be a bunch of validity checks here, right? Um, the first one is gonna be like, 
well, we need to make sure that um, dot is not in the next. Here, I guess it'll be easier if we, let's say, n equals num sub zero. We got that num. So we can say, uh, and dot not in strings sub n. Okay, right? So now we've said, hey, is uh, the spring, if the next character is a pound, or could be a pound, we'll treat, it, we'll treat that question mark as a pound, and the next n things are not dots, because we need them to all be dots, um, and I think we have a length check problem we need to do in here somewhere as well. We'll come back to that. Um, what else? We also know that springs sub, is it n or n plus one? Let's think this through. Uh, n has to be equal to dot or question mark. Right? Because not only do we know that the next, like let's say n is four. We know the next four have to be pounds. We also know the fifth one has to not be a pound. Um, or we could have reached the end of the list. So we could say, um, or len springs equals n. Um, so this is looking complicated. Let's see. We have this and that and that and that. Um, is that everything? So let's see, we're going to need to check the length here. Let's do, we can do a length check up here though, at the beginning before we even get started. So if len springs is less than some nums, um, less than the sum of the numbers, we're definitely good. In fact, if we could even do more, we could say plus uh, len nums minus one, because basically, um, so let's say the numbers were one, two, three. Well, we know that it have to, so that totals up to six springs. We need six springs. But we also need two dots to separate them. So that's going to be the length of the numbers minus one. Um, so it's going to be the sum of the numbers. Yeah, so if it's less than that, then we're going to return zero because there's no possible combinations. We can't succeed. Um, so now by the time we get down here, we know um, that springs is at least n long, because if n was just, if nums is just one number, uh, let's say it's five, then n is five, um, we still know length of springs is not less than five, so it's at least five. Um, so we can check that. That's going to be fine. Um, I guess we probably should check this first, because otherwise we risk a bounds check there. Um, so now we know this is going to be okay, because we've already verified the length up here. And then down here, we do length of springs equals n, or if the length of springs is not equal to n, and it's not less than n because we failed this, that means it's greater than n, which means we can do this check here. So I think we're good there. Um, so if all of those things are true, then we can do total plus equals get combinations. And what are we going to pass in? We're going to pass in springs, and we're going to pass in springs sub n plus 1, all in like that. Now we could pass in springs. Um, do we have to pass in springs sub n to that end? Da, da, da. Does that take into account the dot? Um, but there might not be a dot. So uh, this is interesting. Let's see. Uh, if if springs was, if if springs was just two pounds and n was two, then we would get uh, this would be nothing, and that's okay. Okay, that's okay. I think we can do it this way. Um, and we're gonna do nums. Well, if we have problems, we're gonna want to check that. Um, nums sub one not. So we're going to chop off a number, and we're going to chop off the number of springs and the dot at the start, and we're going to then call get the rest of the combinations of the springs. And so down here we can return total. Um, we need some base cases for sure. Um, if well, let's, we could actually even try to run this. I bet it's going to fail somewhere. Let's see. Um, let's use the example text here. So. Uh, index out of range. So we've got strings is an empty string, so we can't check it. Okay, so we need to handle that. Um, if len string, uh, string springs equals zero, what does that mean? Well, that, so there's no string. Left. Um, if there's no numbers left, we're, we're good, right? So if len numbers, nums equals zero, return one, else we return zero. Because if there's numbers left, but no strings, we're done. Um, I think, I think we have another one. Let's see if we error out here. Yep, so we have another number where there's no numbers. Um, 
let's do a base case if len nums is equal to zero. So there's no numbers. Um, that means there should be no more springs. So if pound in springs return zero, else we return one. So if there's no if there's just, if there's spaces but there's no pounds, then we we, we have a valid combination. Um, and let's run this, and we get twenty one. What was our valid answer? That, that sounds right. And twenty one. And this went very fast. Um, we could cache um, this, but it went so fast. Let's see how long it takes on input. We can actually, before we go to part two, or maybe maybe as part of part two, we can check it. So it's still instant here. Um, 73, 79. Let's see how that does. Sweet. Okay, part two. Uh, I'll pause and read this. Okay. Um, okay. So basically what they're trying to do here is make this, we're going to need this cache, I hope. I hope we can still do it with the cache. Um, we are basically going to unfold everything. So whenever you have a record um, like this row right here, super simple, you're going to multi join it, make it five times. So you're going to have five of these and each of them joined by a question mark. So you can see it went goes what that two, three, four, and there's no question mark at the end. So it's just um, I'll take five copies of this and join them together with a question mark. And then the end is also going to become five, you know, one becomes five ones. Um, so here it's going to be one, one, three, one, one, three, one, one, three, one, one, three, one, one, three. Um, you can see that right here, perfect. Um, and a bunch of joins. So um, we're going to get a much larger number. Let's go ahead and set that up. Um, the first thing we should do is uh, make this a function. Make this part a function. So I'm going to take you. Cut. I'm going to say solve lines, and then we're going to come up here. Def Def solve lines. Take you in. See if we can get some tabbing here. Uh, count equals zero. Count there. Return count. So we've done. We've changed nothing except we've moved this loop into a function. So we should have no problem running this. Still getting the same answer. Perfect. Um, we can now do fold equals one. And we're, we're building out our function to make it more specific here. So now if we come in here, let's see, we have spring and num. So we're going to say springs equals springs. Uh, I believe we can test this in Python real quick. If I have uh, ABC times five, what do I get? I get a single string. I don't want that. I want to be able to join them. What if I do a list like that? That works. Okay. Um, so if I do. Rings like that times five, and then I do question mark dot join. So there we go. So now I'm going to get. So now if I do, uh, just I'll show you down here my thing. Dot join around that. I'm going to get question mark joining up just 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 how I want the folding to work. We're not going to multiply by five. We're going to multiply fold, and so I can actually if I do this by one, I just get my string. So that's what I want for part one. So I haven't changed part one yet, but I've, I've expanded for part two. And we're going to say nums equals, and I believe I can just do nums times fold here. Um, now, again, we haven't changed anything. So in theory, this should still be the same. Perfect. OK, so now we just need to do solve lines fold equals five. And I'm guessing this is just this is going to be this is going to hang. Oh, got an invalid thing. Um, we should do that folding after we've um, in fact, we can just do times fold here and get rid of this line entirely. Make sure this still works. Um, so we got we got part one and part two is hanging. Um, what I want to do is cache this. So we'll do from func tools import cache. And I said we we you know anytime you have a recursive function like this, what the problem is going to be that anytime anytime you pass in the same springs and nums, you, we're going to end up repeating that a lot. In this case, and so, and there may be even different cases where, like, we splinter off and come back together. And so, if we can just start to cache, hey, if you've seen this and this, just return. You know the result. Don't do any more work. Um, it's going to save us time. Um, let's see if this causes us any issues. Let's see, it help if I actually apply the cache. So all I have to do here is apply this cache here and run this, and we have a problem. Unhashable type list. Okay. So the thing about caching is, and we could may we could implement the cache ourselves. Um, but if we want to use this functools cache thing, I have to be able to have 
a hashable um, item as in these inputs have to be hashable. And the reason a list is not hashable is because it's mutable, it can change over time. And so the item can change. Um, so what I'm gonna do here is not use list. What do we need to do? What do I have list? Um, we are going to, strings is a string, and that's, that is immutable array. So we're good there. Um, the list, this issue is, we'll just make this a tuple. Um, and a tuple will, should behave exactly the same as my list, except for um, it's immutable, so it can't be, it, it's hashable. And I mean, that we go, we solved it, we solved it instantly. Let's see if that uh, is actually right. And it is, awesome. So um, the trick here is to, once we make nums, once we make the list of nums an immutable object like a tuple, which is fine because we're not trying to change nums. Now we do make, when we do this right here, we actually make a new object that is a num, the first item of, without the first item of nums, but that's okay. Um, we just don't need to change it. So that, that using a tuple works perfectly fine there. Um, and we got our results. So awesome. Uh, fun challenge today. Uh, thanks for hanging out with me. I'll be back tomorrow. Thank <laughs> you.